Hello again, it's Ed. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining me again. This week I'm going to be back on one of my bugbears, which is manipulating photographs. And it's just, it's really got me down this week because, uh, as I've said many times before, I've spent hours, days, months waiting for the perfect moment to arise. And then I look on Instagram and I see lots of pictures which I think, oh my God, that's amazing. Why didn't I do that? And I look closer and I think, yeah, it might be real, but I don't think you can actually bend a shadow like that. I don't think that's actually possible with physics. Or that person, do you know what? The shadows seem to be falling in a slightly different direction. Hmm, that's not real. That's several photographs put together. And I see other shadows where it looks like basically somebody's just taken a mask in Photoshop and blacked it out. So you've created a shadow that wasn't there. And these geometrics that I love are not geometrics that were actually found in the street, in nature. They're geometrics that were put on with the lasso tool in Photoshop. And that just really, really depresses me. And also, I was looking at competitions last week. I sometimes enter competitions, never win. Well, I won once, but it was a very long time ago. But I was looking at competitions and the rules just said you can manipulate your photograph any way you want. Manipulate it any way you want. This is kind of how I've gone back to film because at least that is pure in its own way. There is a negative. Um, you know, I know there's a digital negative for every image, but phew, I guess you could you could shoot a digital picture and then project it onto some film so it looks like a negative. You know, there's always a way, but it's probably beyond almost everybody. But manipulating photographs in Photoshop and using generative fill and things like that is so easy now it just <sighs> what do you think i hate to be a sports sport i know it's like well you could always dodge and burn in the old days you just had to do it like that and people were always drawing on the negatives with paint to improve the jaw lines of people in victorian eras i know i know and there is a craft to it but street photography is street photography and i want it to be street photography so I didn't want it to look like sour grapes. I didn't want it to be where well, it's just because you can't do it, Ed. You're having a go at people because they've got more craft than you, which is probably true in that case. It's just that I think their craft is not the same as my craft. So I'm going to try and take the sort of picture that I like with the hard shadows, but I'm going to do it on a day when it's totally overcast. There are no shadows and I'm going to have to create those shadows myself. And if the people that I want on the picture don't have to be in the right places, I'll just take them from other pictures and put them there. See if you can tell the difference. Okay, so I've found a location that should work quite well. It's just a white wall, so we can paint our own shadows on there, can't we? And lots of people going through, there's some nice geometrics. We can just play around with this, so let's get a shot. So we're not getting many people going past, so we'll have to paint somebody in from a different picture. But, you know, why not for cheating? Why not cheat the whole way? But it would be nice to get something real in the shot. Okay, so here we have our base image. Nothing particularly exciting, but there is a real person in it. All we need to do now is just deal with the geometry a little bit and make sure it's all straight and got the right amount of contrast texture and clarity before we begin doing any interesting edits on it and then we will open it in Photoshop and when we've done that let's be bold let's put a really complicated shadow in so we'll just use the lasso tool and I'm using the straight edged one uh, the geometric one because obviously I want it to be hard edges I'm feathering it a little bit if I was going to spend a bit more time to do this properly I would feather the edges differently on different parts of the shadow to make it more realistic and I've done that on a couple of other ones which I'll show you later but this is just to show you what you can do really quickly I don't want to spend too much time on it because if I became good at it I might actually want to do it more and that would be terrible so a little bit of knowledge of how light works allows you to put the shadows in the right sort of directions. You've got to imagine 2D space as a 3D space. So if you've got some knowledge of perspective and drawing, then it makes it a bit easier. Then we just need to blend the layer. So we don't want the shadow to be completely black, 
because it would be totally the wrong amount of contrast. You wouldn't get that harder shadow with the amount of contrast in the rest of the picture. So we'll make it just a small shadow. And then what we'll do is increase the contrast of the whole scene so that it looks more natural. As I said, this is just a cheap and cheerful attempt, so it's not going to be perfect, but it's just to give you an idea. Cheap and cheerful, but it will just give you an idea. So I'm messing around with the curves here, blending everything and yeah, that looks okay. Obviously there's too much saturation in it, but we will deal with that later. And I think a bit of cropping is needed because the more of the surrounding environment that we see, the more obvious it is that that shadow isn't quite right. But I think we need a little bit of foreground interest. Now, I've seen a lot of these pictures. One of the things that's exciting is that you get somebody in the foreground and somebody in the background, and it's quite hard to do that and get both happening at the same time. So I will find a picture that I took actually just at the same time. It's just a few moments after. So that person was there and the light will be the same on them and they were in the foreground. And yeah, I'll just cut that person out, move them from the one picture to the other. I could do this with a lasso tool, but I'm going to use the uh, object selection tool because it's just a lot quicker. And then when I've popped them in the image, I just have to work out where is the best place for them to be to look natural and just play with the contrast a little bit to make sure that they are almost in keeping with the rest of the picture. And then I will blur the foreground slightly just to make it look more realistic. We're going to go in and just change the sky to the left of the picture so that it's the right contrast and just cut out uh, the bit from the duplicate layer that I made. And there we go, on, off, on, off, and we can just move things around a little bit more, play with the curves a bit more, and then we will add some noise some digital noise that looks like grain and that again it just blends everything together hides the joins a little bit obviously this shadow is a very fake shadow but it's just to show you and then you can just tidy up a bit with a little bit of gentle dodging and burning so it looks like it's a dodge and burn effect rather than a geometric cutout and there you have it yeah it's not perfect by any means but five minutes at most doing that and it's not a bad start is it let me show you a couple of other images that I did when I was thinking about doing this as a video for you uh, which I spent a bit more time on so with these you can see this is how it started off and this is how it ends up started off ends up yeah, you can see that it's not real, but again, this isn't something that I specialise in. And I'm sure that if I dedicated my time to it, certainly just a fraction of the time I've spent waiting on the streets for things like this to actually happen, I could create fakes that would fool 90% of the Instagram audience. But that's not what I want to do. What did you think of that? I thought it was an interesting experiment. Uh, I was quite impressed with how realistic a couple of them were. I think the one that I shot the main one was probably the least successful of them all um, but I think I could put one of those on Instagram and quite a lot of people would notice that it was fake obviously it wasn't as interesting as some of the ones that I see on Instagram that have had a lot of thought put into how they're going to be manufactured but I don't want to go down that route I really think that it's important to be in a place photograph it you can do you know small amounts of tinkering to try and get the best out of a picture. Bit of dodging, bit of burning, maybe add a bit of grain if it's looking too waxy, if you've shot it at a, on a digital camera that hasn't got amazing resolution or something. Get the best out of what you've got, but don't add in things that weren't there. If there is a shadow, accentuate it, that's fine, but don't create one that wasn't there. Don't put another person in the frame because it adds balance when they weren't there. The trick is to get those two people at that moment. And something that I didn't go into in the manipulations that I did, but I've seen elsewhere, is changing the colour of people's clothing or the colour of walls or buildings or cars in a, in a photo to try and make it look like all the colours balance and that it, it's a, a nice colour wheel representation. Again, that combined with adding in shadows, you can get a brilliant picture. But if you're going to do that, why not just paint it 
learn to paint because that's kind of what you're doing anyway. You're creating a collage, which is an art form, but it's not street photography in my view. But anyway, I really want to hear what you think. Probably that I'm talking rubbish and I should go off and do something a little bit more useful, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go and shoot next week's video. So I do hope you'll join me for that. Um, please do like, subscribe, share this with your friends. It'd be great to have a few more people commenting below. Have a fantastic week, whatever you're doing. See you again, same time next week. Thanks again and bye for now.